أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا وقائدنا وعلمنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بأحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا أما بعد Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with these most blessed days of the year, the days of Dhul Hijjah, and specifically the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, he informed us, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that there are no days in which good actions are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than these days, the days of the Hijjah. And so, during these days, we increase in terms of our good deeds, our acts of charity, our fasting, our prayers, our reading of Qur'an. But one day in particular is most special, which is the day of Arafah. And this is the ninth of the Hijjah. So tomorrow the Hijjaj, they will be standing on the plain of Arafat. And so it's important for us to be able to understand the story behind Arafat. How did Arafat become Arafat? And what the significance of the day of Arafat is, which we are encouraged to fast. And we'll speak about that momentarily. One of the scholars of Sirah, Muhammad ibn Ishaq, he narrated that when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, the intimate close friend of Allah, Khalil rahman of the Most Merciful, when he completed the building of the Kaaba, as he was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came to him and he commanded him, Uf bihi sabah do seven rounds or circumambulate around the Kaaba. And so Ibrahim alayhi salam along with his son Ismail they did seven circuits around the Kaaba. And so when they completed the seven circuits around the Kaaba they prayed both of them behind the Maqam Ibrahim. So that famous rock that is there to this day is the rock that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam stood upon while he was building the Kaaba and miraculously his feet imprinted into this rock and that rock has been preserved for thousands of years until our time and it is known as Maqam Ibrahim and so they prayed behind the Maqam to the Ka'az. and then Jibreel alayhi salatu salatu wasalam he uh, stood with him and he showed him all of the different rites of the Hajj. فَأَرَاهُ الْمَنَاسِكَ كُلَّهَا So he showed him all the rites. As-Safa wal Marwa, going between Safa and Marwa, Mina, Muzdalifa, and Arafa. So he showed him all of these rites. And then the narration it says, then Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, uh, when he completed these rites, and he went to each of these places and Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam was teaching him all of the different sacrificial or the, all the different rites of the, the Hajj until they got to Arafah. And so then when they were at Arafah, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam said to Ibrahim, A'arafta manasika. Do you know your rites? Meaning the rites of the pilgrimage, the rituals. And so Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he said, Naam. Uh, yes, indeed, I know. And so that from that time, فَسُمِّيَتْ عَرَفَاتٍ بِذَلِكَ لِقَوْلِهِ أَعْرَفْتَ مَنَاسِكَكَ 
that it's based on the statement of Jibreel asking Ibrahim, do you know the rights now for the pilgrimage? And Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam replied in, in the affirmative. And in another narration, when Jibreel uh, alayhi salatu wasalam, after completing the tawaf, uh, and that uh, they, they went to all the different rites, every time he would say, A'arafta, A'arafta, do you know the right? Do you know the right? And so then Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam would reply, Arifta, I know, Arifta, I know. And so then Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was commanded, make the call. Call the people to the pilgrimage. ثُمَّ أَمَرَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ أَنْ يُؤَذِّنَ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ قَالْ يَا رَبِّ مَا يَبْلُغُ صَوْتِ So Ibrahim was then commanded to call all the people to come for the pilgrimage. And so Ibrahim, he said, My Lord, how will my voice reach? My voice won't reach people. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and responded to him, أَذِّنْ وَعَلَيَّ الْبَلَى Give the call and upon me is to ensure that the, the, your voice will reach them. And this is the, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hajj when Allah commanded Ibrahim وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرِي يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيرٍ لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ وَيَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ عَلَى مَا رَزَقَهُمْ مِنْ بَهِيمَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا وَأَطْعِمُوا الْبَائِسَ الْفَقِيرِ So Allah commanded to Ibrahim, call all people to the pilgrimage and they will come to you on foot and on every lean camel from every distant path. So they may obtain benefits that are in store for them and pronounce the name of Allah on appointed days over the sacrificial animals that He has provided for them. So eat from their meat and feed those who are desperately poor. And so when we understand the significance of Hajj and all the different rites that are related to the story of Ibrahim and that act of obedience that Ibrahim did in terms of, of the sacrifice, but when we look at Arafat in particular, that there is specific significance to that day. There is a hadith that is related by Al-Khatib Al-Tabrizi in his Mishkat Al-Masabih. And this is a hadith from Jabir that he narrated that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ عَرَفَةً إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَنْزِلُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا فَيُبَاهِ بِهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ فَيَقُولُ انظروا إلى عبادي أتوني شعفا غبرا ضاجين من كل فج عميق أشهدتكم أني قد غفرت لهم So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says on the day of Arafat and this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrating this When the day of Arafat comes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven and praises the people who are on Arafat and he says to the angels, Look at my servants who have come to me, disheveled, dusty, and crying out from every deep valley. I call you to witness. This is Allah saying to the angels, I call you to witness that I have forgiven them. And so then the angels, they say, Ya Rabb, Fulanun, Kana yurahaku wa Fulanun wa Fulana. So they say that, Oh my Lord, so and so that they used to do things that were shameful. They were doing sins and whatnot. And so and so and such and such a woman. So the angels are saying this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying that the people who are at Arafat, there are some of them who they're sinners, many of them. And so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He responds to them and He says, Qad I have forgiven them. As well, and so then the Prophet ﷺ he said, "Fama min yomin akthar atiqan min al nari min yomi arah." That the Prophet ﷺ then informed us, "No day has more people that are set free from the fire, that are set or liberated from the hellfire than the day of arah, which is the ninth of the Hajj. This is the day in which the the most number of people throughout the entire year are set free." on specifically on the day of, of Arafah. And so when the Prophet 
he informed us of this day and he said that this is the most important part of the pilgrimage. When he said, Al-Hajju Arafah. Those two words. He said, Hajj is Arafah. You miss Arafah, there's no Hajj for you. You don't get to, uh, uh, it's, it doesn't count for you. Al-Hajju Arafah. And so uh, Ibn Rajab uh, al-Hambali in his book on uh, when he speaks of the sacred months and all the different uh, virtues and bounties of the, the sacred months in his book it's called Lata'if uh, al-Ma'arif Fima li mawasim al-Aam min al that this is a book that talks about what we should be doing during each month of the, of, of, of the year each month of the sacred uh, uh, or all the, the, the Islamic months and so he says in his book in the section on the Hijjah, he says that when the pilgrimage is, is completed on the day of Arafat and on the stay, the standing of the day of Arafat, that's what makes the, the pilgrimage complete, meaning that, that it makes it uh, uh, acceptable or it makes it valid uh, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the greatest pillar of uh, the pilgrimage because of that statement of the Prophet sallallahu al Hajj Arafat that the pilgrimage is uh, the day of Arafat. Arafat consists of, that is the pilgrimage. And so then the day of Arafat is the day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees the most number of people or no, uh, amount of people from the fire. And so whoever is standing at Arafat and whoever is not standing at Arafat. This is what Ibn uh, Rajab is saying. مَنْ وَقَفَ بِعَرَفَ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَقَفْ بِهَا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْأَمْصَارِ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That any of the Muslims, anyone who has an Adam's weight of faith in their hearts, they have this opportunity and this potential to be liberated from the fire, where, regardless of where they are on the face of the earth. And so that's why Ibn Rajab, he says, فَلِذَلِكَ صَارَ الْيَوْمَ الَّذِي يَلِيهِ عِيدًا لِجَمِيعَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That's why the day after it, it's a Eid for all the Muslims because it's the day that follows the day of Arafat in which the most number of people, the most number of Muslims throughout the entire world are liberated from the fire. And so then those who are witnessing and those who are performing the sacred rites uh, in, uh, uh, at Arafat and in Mina and Muzdalifa, right? And those who aren't, all of them, they have the, uh, the bounty of the virtue of being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so long as we seek it, so long as we seek the forgiveness uh, of Allah sub, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, on this day uh, and everyone then celebrates on the day of Eid uh, because we have a share in those who are liberated uh, from the fire and those who uh, are forgiven on the, the, the day of Arafat. So those who are on Arafat and, and those who aren't. So when we look at the the what Allah tells us about Arafat in the Quran. Laysa alaykum junaqun and tabtahu fadlan min rabbikum. That there's no blame on you for seeking the bounty of your Lord during the pilgrimage, during this journey. Fa'idha afadtum min arafat fadhkuru Allah inda al-mash'ad al-haram wa adhkuruhu kama hadakum wa in kuntum min qablihi la min al-dalim. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you return from Arafat, Praise Allah near the sacred place, al Mash'ar al-Haram, and praise Him for having guided you. For surely before this guidance, you were astray. Then Allah says, ثُمَّ أَفِيضُ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَفَاضَ النَّاسِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Then go forth with the rest of the pilgrims and seek Allah's forgiveness. Indeed, Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. The day of Arafat, for those who are performing the pilgrimage, is the closest experience that any human being can have to the Day of Judgment. There is no experience like it, where you have millions of people that are before you, and you see the sea of people in all their diversity of, amongst the Muslims, different colors, different uh, uh, forms, different languages, everyone is going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they are seeking Allah's mercy, His bounty, His forgiveness. Every single person. And this is what the Day of Judgment is going to be like. People will be behind their leaders, those who are leading them. In the Hajj, they'll be behind them, following their actions. And they'll hear the loud voices that are speaking in many different languages. And they'll see the various groups of people following their Imams through all the different ritual observances. So this is what Imam Ghazali rahimahullah, is saying about the Day of Arafat. And he says, recall the site of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the Resurrection. 
the gathering of the community with their prophets and leaders, each community following its prophet, aspiring after his intercession or shafa'ah, all wavering with equal uncertainty between rejection and acceptance. We don't know if we will be accepted or rejected in terms of our actions uh, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then Imam al-Ghazali continues and he says, after that recollection, set your heart on supplication and entreat to Allah, and, and entreat it to Allah. That you, you humble yourself and you seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through asking Him for what it is that you need, His forgiveness and His mercy. That you may be resurrected in the company of those who are successful. Make certain your hope of being answered, for the place is noble regarding to Arafat. And mercy reaches all creatures from the majesty of the Divine Presence through the venerable hearts of the mainstays of earth. And so this is something that if we understand the, the significance and we turn to Allah on this day, even though we're not on Arafat, that, that when we're, we're, even when we remember the people who are uh, at Arafat and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and for liberation uh, from the fire, then this is something that uh, we can be a part of as well. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he said that when it is the, the evening of the day of Arafat, which is actually tonight at the time of Maghrib, he said, إِذَا كَانَ عَشِيَةَ يَوْمَ عَرَفَةً لَمْ يَبْقَى أَحَدٌ فِي قَلْبِهِ مِثْقَالُ ذَرَّةٍ مِنْ إِيمَانٍ إِلَّا غُفِرَ لَهُ So Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he said that when the, the, the day of Arafat uh, comes, and then uh, after the day of Arafat, uh, just at the time of Maghrib, which would be then uh, tomorrow, uh, after, uh, as Maghrib approaches, that there won't be a single person who has in their heart an Adam's weight of faith, except that they will be forgiven. And so it was said to Ibn Umar, they said, Is it only for the people who are at Arafat, or is it for all people? And so Ibn Umar, he said, it's for all people. And so we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure and that uh, we, we turn to Him with all humility and to ensure that we uh, fast on this day. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, he said that uh, when a person fasts on the day of, of Arafat, that uh, I have expectation that they will have uh, their sins uh, expiated for for two years. The year that came before and the year that is after. And this is in Sahih Muslim. Uh, and so then uh, by fasting on that day, uh, we gain the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for uh, two years. That those that, the, the year that came before and the year uh, that came after, simply for fasting um, on that day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He swore an oath in the Quran uh, uh, for, on the day of, uh, of, for the day of Arafah. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, Surah Al-Fajr, وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes that uh, oath uh, that, uh, in Surah Al-Buruj, not the Fajr, in Surah Al-Buruj, وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ That the Shahid is the day of Jum'ah and the Mashhud is the day of Arafah. Right? And the Yawm Al-Maw'ud uh, is the day of Judgment. And so this is something that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bears witness and swears upon, it means that it is something that is indeed great and noble. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be amongst the people who are liberated on the day of Arafat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds during these days of the Hijjah and specifically on the day of Arafat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate the suffering and the injustice and oppression of our Muslim brothers and sisters uh, uh, on this day uh, and uh, on the day of Arafat. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with the best of people, with the prophets, uh, and the uh, the messengers on the day of judgment. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله الذين لي وكم السلام المسلمين من كل دم فاستغفر إنه هو فضل الله. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيد النبي المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم. وَمَنْ يُطَعِ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّنَا عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم 
وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقلامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين المرابطين في كل مكان اللهم انصرهم في فلسطين وفي غزة اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض وفي مغاربها اللهم ابطف بنا وبهم في مجرت بهم المقادير ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين